Hello guys, it's Vivs here from SlideNerd. In this video, I'm gonna further continue the discussion of Xcode. This time, I will take the right side and show you what are the different areas, utilities and pains out there that you can use in Xcode on the right side. Two things I would like to point out before we start. First of all, we are also there on Udemy. The li link is right below in the description of this video. Second of all, if you go to our channel SlideNerd, if you go to playlist, you will find this video along with the rest of the iOS videos in the iOS Swift tutorial for beginners playlist. There's also a Swift playlist here that includes only Swift videos. Let's get started. Let's begin our discussion by talking about the area that is above the source code and below the jump bar. If you zoom in, you will find out that there is this icon here, which is basically a pop-up menu. There I can see the recent files that I've been working with. There's a super class section here that shows me that UI view controller is the super class of my current view controller file. On to the right of that pop-up menu, you see these two arrows. Let's go back and go forward. If you click on go back, I go to the previous file that I was working with. I go here, I come back to the current file. Now to the right of that, there's a segmented pop-up over here. For example, I can just select first pop up here and see all the folders inside that pop up I can select the second one and I can see the files that are inside a particular folder by selecting that the third one is going to give me more access to indicate what file is being currently displayed and if I select the last one I can see the variables and methods inside this particular file let's take a look at what's there on the right hand side you notice that this area on the right hand side is called the utilities pane immediately it displays me the name of the file that I'm working with that is viewcontroller.swift where is that file located what is the full path of that file the membership the encoding settings whether it's using unicode utf8 or 16 what is the size of a tab indent and other items like that and other than that there's a mention of source control here whether it's being placed under source control or not depending on what you selected at the time of creating this project initially if you go to the second option here which gives you this question mark it's called the quick help inspector if you click on that it gives you the declaration of that method view did load and it tells you when that method is being called and stuff like that if you go back you can select the view controller class and in that case it's going to give you the declaration of the ui view controller class and tell you what that class has and what the different methods and apis available in it now if you come to the main dot storyboard file on the left right hand side bottom here we have some options available now this area is called the library of course we can make it bigger by dragging it if that's what makes you happier there are four tabs inside this area the first part is called the file template library now in this library you have several options like create a c file a storyboard a view a window for example you can just drag the swift file straight to your group on the left hand side and you can create a swift file that way and that's a shortcut of creating things out there Take a look, there are several options available and you can customize what you can do with each of these options. The second one here is called the code snippet library. Now this lets you browse through a collection of code snippets and you can determine what you want to use and what you don't want. For example, you may have to use the for loop here. You can just hit for and then it says for statement execute code with a value. Now I can drop this probably inside my person.swift file somewhere. So let's say inside our initializer, I can just take this for statement part here and drop it right there and there you see there's my for loop statement being added I can add whatever statements I want and I can close the for loop and complete it if that's what I need the third part here which is the object library lets you add the views and other controls that we have already seen in the previous videos and the last part is called the media library now this contains all the images and videos or audio files or anything that you add here that is going to be used within your app First, let's select the label here so that we can see what's going on in the right hand side, which would be the utilities area. If you zoom in, you notice that there are six tabs. First one is called the file inspector. It shows you the properties of the file itself. Now, this is very similar to what you saw with the viewcontroller.swift file just a while ago. The second one here is the help inspector, which is going to give you the help. Right now, it says no quick help over here. The third one that we have is called the identity inspector. If you take a look at that, you can specify a custom label class over here, or you can specify some properties with respect to your document accessibility settings, which again, we'll be covering in a lot more detail as we go slowly further in the series. The fourth one is where you will be working usually. It shows you the properties of the label itself. For example, you want the text plane or whether it should be styled like HTML, what kind of text color you want, the font size, the font style, alignment of the text, the number of lines, and many other properties that you can see here. 
Now notice the section at the top that says label and notice this section here that says view. Now UI view is the super class of UI label and that means you get a chance to customize the properties of the parent from here on the right hand side. And as you change things, you will notice those changes happen on the right hand side again as well. The next tab that would be is called the size inspector. Here you can take a look at the label, its preferred width, height, X, Y and other properties, the constraints that you've added for auto layout, which you can again edit by clicking on edit here. And there's one more thing over here that's contained hugging priority and compression resistance. And we'll talk about this later because these are advanced topics with respect to auto layout. The last one here is called the connection inspector. And again, we will be working with this because this is where you're going to connect your main.storyboard with your viewcontroller.swift file. As a beginner who has come to Xcode for the first time, one of the most frustrating issues is that you don't see line numbers here and the font size is way too small to read, especially if you're on the 27 inch iMac. Now that can be easily fixed by going to Xcode here and going to preferences. This is where you see a lot of your Xcode settings taking place. For example, there's a general tab here where you can talk something about issues. You can go to accounts, you can add GitHub accounts out here. For the behaviors, you can see and customize how Xcode should work in different places. Navigation again controls something similar to fonts and colors where you will select all your text out here and simply change the font size by going here to this text part and setting whatever you want. The text editing part lets you show line numbers you notice here and there's the key bindings that lets you control shortcuts out there, source control to do GitHub and other things, downloads that shows what kind of downloads you've been doing over the previous days and there's locations finally where it is talking about some location for its archive files. Item of importance would be inside our storyboard itself which would be right here the document outline. You click on that you see all the items that are contained inside your view controller file. So this would be the view controller itself there's a top layout guide which is the top area the bottom area the view which is the full rectangle or screen in our case the label that is contained inside the view, the constraints that we have added using auto layout to that particular label. So if you expand the constraints, you notice that there is center X, which is represented by this horizontal vertical line here. There is center Y. Also, once you select the label at the bottom right hand side here, you see these three little options. They let you specify the alignment settings in settings and whether you should update the frames and that is resolve auto layout issues. So the first setting align basically lets you position it at the center and lets you add a constraint here and you can do the other types of settings that you can see again which we'll be covering as we go further because there's a lot of settings in auto layout that needs to be covered. There's pin here that lets you specify what it should do with the nearest neighbor or nearest view around it and then there's the update frames here that lets you update the frames as the name suggests. For example right now at the top if you remember we we have this triangle here that says misplaced view. If you can take a look at that in the issue navigator, it says frame for hello world from webs will be different, blah, blah, blah. Now, what does this misplaced view actually mean? Let's try to find out. We can simply go to Google and we can type the exact same error, which is one of the best techniques to learn a lot. It's a misplaced frame, view frame, iOS, and we should be able to get a nice result from Stack Overflow that talks about what needs to be done. So here I open this link in a new tab and you notice that this guy says you need to update the constraints to match the frames of these views. In other words, you go to editor, resolve auto layout issues, clear all constraints in view controller. We can do that in several other ways. We can go here at the bottom, we can select the label and we can go to the last option which is update frames. And in this case, you notice that it says update frames for selected views or all the views. Now in my case, I'm just going to say all the views. I'm gonna click update frames. And now when I zoom back, you notice that the error at the top or the warning at the top has vanished. So that's how you fix things if something goes wrong. Notice at the center of X code over here in the storyboard, there's a W N E H N E. Now this is basically what you call adaptive layout. In other words, if you click on this, you notice it says any width and any height. And there are some options like the smallest box here says compact width, compact height. And the largest box here says regular width and regular height. Now this regular width, regular height is the screen for the iPad, whereas the compact one is for the smallest iPhone out there. And as you change the setting here, you will notice that different devices come into the picture. And don't worry, you don't have to worry about all possible combinations of these settings. We are just going to find out what kind of settings are needed to target most of the iOS devices out there as we go in the further videos when we talk about adaptive layouts. So in this video, I believe I have given you a rough overview of what are the different areas in Xcode and what they actually mean. As we go further, we have to dig into some of those areas in detail and find out 
what you can do with Xcode. In the meantime, Google is out at Slidenode and Udemy. We are there where we put our practical stuff. There's going to be Twitter and Facebook on our social networks as well. And all the code for this video and the upcoming video is going to be on Slidenode GitHub, which you can again Google out there. If you like what you saw, please like this video, share this video, subscribe to Slidenode, and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a nice day.